Hello and welcome to this session organized by the University of Oulu regarding one of the main uh, offered international programs, which is environmental engineering. I'm Juan Vasquez and I'm going to be hosting this session today. With me, I have uh, Antonio and Rishikesh. Can you please introduce yourselves? My name is Antonio Calo. I'm uh, originally from Italy and I'm one of the uh, responsible teachers and researcher uh, the Faculty of Technology dealing with the program and dealing with the teaching itself. Okay, thank you. And um, I'm Rishikesh Raut. Um, I have recent, recently graduated from the environmental engineering program at the university and my major is in sustainable energy systems. Okay, thank you both for being here. And well, let's start with the questions. Uh, let's start describing the generalities of the program. Like, are there any orientation tracks, focus areas? Uh, Antonio, can you elaborate a little bit on this topic? Okay, so the program itself is divided in three main orientation. Uh, sustainable energy systems, uh, hydrology and water management, and industrial environmental engineering. Uh, each program, of course, has its own flavor and its own characteristics. Uh, what I can say in general, what, put, mm, what these three programs have in common, uh, is that they offer uh, a broad range of, uh, of courses and, uh, and they are dealing with a broad, a broad range of uh, topics. So if I have to simplify, on one end of the spectrum, there is the dynamic, uh, the dynamics of the natural uh, phenomena that allow us, for example, allow students to understand and model uh, environmental loads. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum, there are technical and technological solutions, uh, the infrastructure. So students in this way, they have the possibility to deal with a range of topics that allow them to have a kind of comprehensive understanding of the, the subject. So it covers the best of two worlds there. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. Thank you. So, Rishikesh, uh, from the perspective of a student, uh, let's start from the beginning. How did you decide to, uh, to, apply, to apply first to this program and to enroll uh, after that? How did you hear first about this program? Well, I heard about this program from the master's portal. Um, and while I was looking for exemplary institutions offering um, a route to study and conserve the environment. So um, in that regard, there, it was common knowledge by then that the Nordic countries are forerunners in, in this race towards sustainability. So it was a natural decision to apply to the University of Olu. Okay, that's really interesting. That's an inter interesting reason over there. Okay, so uh, Antonio, what will be some of the main requirements speaking about uh, skills or some of, of the academic requirements also, whatever you want to elaborate on this, for the potential applicants to this program? So, um, ideally, generally speaking, um, engineering background, it's, uh, it's uh, in a kind of important set of, uh, includes a number of set, an important set of requirements. A any engineering? Any engineering in principle. Then, of course, uh, students interested in different orientation, they are welcome to check specific requirements or recommendations for different orientations because there are some programs that are a little bit more oriented toward the infrastructure. Uh, so, for example, a background in, uh, in uh, civil engineering would be an advantage, if uh, not necessarily a, a deal breaker, but for sure is an advantage for anyone interested. So yeah, there are these kind of specifications that students should actually check in the moment they want to choose one or other or the other orientation. In general, ideally, uh, also what we have in common with the other teachers when we are talking about the ideal student that should apply is that a student that should have a, an open minded, uh, should have a, an open mind, especially when it comes to Finland, because Finland and Oulu specifically, uh, are, is a country and is a, a city that uh, is a, a never-ending source of surprises. It's kind of like a set of unexpected surprises. Um, you have, uh, on paper, you have a relatively small city in a relatively small country that appears to be in a challenging climate far away from everything. But 
Uh, to a closer look, it turns out to be, first of all, a community of uh, extremely uh, high-level living standards, uh, world-class infrastructure, and, and students find themselves living and working in this kind of environment. Um, the, the university itself is extremely multidisciplinary in, uh, in, its, uh, in its character. And even the location itself is an advantage because the imposing nature actually give students a, a direct contact with what is going to be sometimes the environment, the challenges of their, uh, their, their future profession. So, of course, I think we all can relate to this. Yes. Surprise <laughs> factors. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really true. Thank you very much. Uh, Richard Cash, so let's start. Uh, you mentioned you are a graduate student now, recently graduated. How was your experience on the courses that you took over, over your, your master's, during your master's? Like, did you enjoy these courses? How, how wide were there? What did you like most, most about those, probably? Well, like Antonio mentioned, um, the open-mindedness is evident in the way the courses have been designed because they, have, they seem to cover all aspects of sustainability and even beyond those things. So a student can expose himself or herself to the variety of um, opportunities, possibilities, problems, and solutions. So then uh, one is free to choose. And speaking about freedom, it brings me to the most favorite aspect of having studied here. Looking back now, it was very precious, the style of education that was imparted. It was precious because while there was, uh, the teachers were always accessible to help you, they did not always necessarily tell you what to do. So while there was something, there was a problem we need to solve, how we're going to solve it was left up to, up to us. So that degree of freedom that was afforded to us, in a way, it just allowed us to learn to swim by ourselves. And it is so much essential for a person's growth, I've come to realize. Okay, well, that sounds really good and, and really promising for the potential students. Uh, so, Antonio, many students would also like to know what are their, what's uh, going to be the career opportunities when they graduate from a program like this? Uh, is there any wide areas, something that they can uh, think about in the future? Well, a reflection of the fact that students are going to uh, deal with a broad range of topics during their studies, from a more theoretical, shall we say, to a more applied. Uh, that is also reflected in the career opportunities they have. So thinking about the track record that we have with our alumni, uh, they found uh, career opportunities uh, in industry, of course, uh, locally, domestically in Finland, and most importantly also internationally because it's an international master program. So what quite often students tend to forget uh, is that once they, they graduate, they have a set of skills that are extremely valuable on the world market in terms of, uh, in terms of work opportunities. And that includes also uh, the possibility to do research, of course, but, uh, but that it depends, like in many other situations, from the skills, inclinations, interests uh, from different students. If there is a possibility to do research, again, locally, or, or internationally, students are actually extremely welcome to it because uh, that also, as a university, as a group, allows uh, also to expand our network, uh, stay in touch with our alumni. Uh, the average students, we keep on telling them, uh, they are our youngest uh, colleagues. So that is the first step they take to become our colleagues. So mm -hmm. that's the spirit. Okay, thank you. That sounds really nice, actually. Uh, Rishikesh, what about the life around the studies, like we've talked a lot about uh, courses, about the academic world and environment here. What about the life around these studies? Uh, activities, parties, guilds, what did you find? How would you describe the student life in Oulu? I would say it depends on what, how you like to be. If you like silence and solitude, you can find Oulu to be an enriching place. If you like to be around people, and socially um, indulge with each other and you thrive of social contact, Olu can provide you that too. And when you mentioned student guilds, 
the, they are an excellent um, hub for people to communicate and just uh, just exchange ideas, network, and just basically have fun. Uh, so I would certainly suggest um, to enjoy all aspects of um, the outdoor culture. Olu has a very rich outdoor culture. The rich nature of of the city is certainly that can be enjoyed in all four seasons differently. Wow, that's really good. So you can find anything you want to do, you can find it in Olu. I would say so. That's really good. Well, thank you both for being here. And I hope this uh, session helps uh, our potential students to start their career path in here at uh, the University of Oulu. And I'll see you at the next one.